una y dos y dos una y dos una y dos Hello and welcome to Cortez NYC live stream of the podcast. This is a bi-weekly show broadcasting out of New York City. We are your hosts, Cortez NYC. And Carla de Puerto Rico. And on the show, we talk about art, creativity, city life from a Latino perspective. I'm a visual artist. And I'm a singer. And this is episode nine, Go Big. We are available on iTunes, Stitcher, and Podbean under Cortez NYC live stream. You can also find us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. And a quick shout out to some of our people on Instagram, D Double Design, Lesk Styles, Waste IF, July 4 Art, JRC SNR, What Up Homie, Sonia Gangoli Art, Grime, C Crusher, Sedimar 48, Smurfy 138, What Up Homie, Puppet Master Ricky, The Apparition 718, Guillotine Cuts, Gazer 162, Brooklyn Winds, D Menace, what up, homie? Nueva York, Brooklyn, Enemy Warner, what's up, what's up? Rockstar, Mirrors One, the one and only, and a few podcasts, No Free Drinks, La Verdad Podcast, TK in the AM, Chico in the Grin, Drop a Gem Podcast, DK, I See You, Sancocho for the Soul, Hablando Plepas, as always, blah, 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 and Rambling Alcoholics. <laughs> Here we go. So this art life, we're going to talk about painting large scale murals. Whenever you've seen somebody paint really large murals, what does it take to do that? Um, Carla, you've come with me while I've painted some of these murals. Yes. And I think you probably have an opinion about some of, or some insight since you've seen this from beginning to end, the process. Yes, I mean, the, the process is slow. At the beginning, um, you get to see the sketch, how it's going, how it starts, and then I think, I think it's interesting to see the sketch, and then the middle part, which is after you know the artist put the sketch on the wall, they start like to fill out those lines with different colors to make the form or the shape to come alive that's the tedious process that takes a long time hmm. and that's the process that always a little like bores me a little bit uh. as I'm watching because I'm just watching I'm I not understand. really doing anything well, at that time it, it can be it can be boring to watch it can be boring to do sometimes <laughs> I know and sometimes I think about that I'm like wow this is really really a commitment from the artist to be like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna complete this amount today and I'm gonna spend my whole day because it's a whole day since the morning sometimes until 7, 8 if the sun's still out until 8 you're there until 8 yeah so yeah, yeah. alright well, it's sacrifice yeah so the subject is large scale paintings large scale murals right um, not to be compared with like let's say doing just a quick piece you know just some lettering or just doing a character i mean i'm talking about something really big where you're doing a background and everything and um you're doing something that might take more than one day maybe two days um, in some cases three days four days depending on how intricate you want to get and how detailed you want to get um, so what i want to talk about is that when you do these kind of projects what should you expect if you're an artist taking on one of these challenges if you are listening to this podcast and you've always thought you'd like to do a giant mural, you know, um, this is my warning to you of what you should expect. So number one, I would say is that it's physical labor. It is laborious. It is draining on your body. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts after a couple of days, you know, if let's say you painted two days in a row when you're done your body's gonna ache you're gonna be going up and down ladders you're gonna be going left and right carrying paint back and forth standing all day you're gonna get tired so it's not as easy as let's say just staying at home and doing something in a black book or sitting on the computer mm -hmm. uh, and doing some art you know it, it is laborious um, another thing is that it takes time um, it's, it's nothing great comes quickly 
you know, it's going to take time. It's going to take days, you know. Uh, so you're going to have to plan for your days. You're going to have to plan ahead. You're going to have to say, you know, I can do this on a weekend or I can do, I can got to take a couple of days off so I can spend those days doing this thing. Um, this is not something you're just going to go and do in an afternoon. And if it was that easy, then everybody would do it, right? But it's not. So it's going to take time. You got to plan out your days. Uh, another thing is uh, you are going to have to give in to the elements. You're going to have to realize that you're going to be, number one, you're going to be on a ladder. So if you're afraid of heights or if, or if uh, you know, you have some people have back problems or physical problems, you know, th this might not be for you doing a large scale painting because you're going to be on ladders. You're going to be on lifts. You're going to be on something a crate or a step stool you're, you're going to be climbing up and down up and down and you're going to be in the sun you're going to be in the cold you're going to be maybe in the rain maybe in the snow because you can't predict exactly the weather and the day that you decide to do this the next day it might rain or it might be really nice the one day you decided but the second day it might be really cold which happened to us in florida yeah. I, I think i mean for the people listening it might sound like i'm just ranting off a list of things no i'm telling you from facts mm -hmm. from experience <laughs> from experiences all these things that you got to keep in mind i'm talking about years of experience doing these things um and i'm just giving it to you all in one shot so yeah you you're gonna have to know ahead of time that if you want to do a large mural you're going to be fighting the elements one way or another whether it's too sunny and too hot or it's too cold there's been times we've been on walls right carla in, in, in brooklyn yeah that time in Brooklyn was blazing hot and there was no escape from the sun. There was not a little tree, nothing to... No to, shade. Yeah, nothing. And, and you're just standing there and, it, and the sun is beaming off of the wall, reflecting mm -hmm. onto you. Mm -hmm. And all the spray paint and aerosols stick into your skin. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, all you want to do is leave and take a shower and just never think about spray paint ever again. Yeah. <laughs> but the wall looks fresh and you're like, all right, it looks cool, but... <laughs> um, At least it looks nice, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so you got you to gotta get past that, the elements. The next thing is, it is going to be expensive. This is something that people never think about, um, unless if you're sponsored or unless if somebody's giving you the paint for some reason. But if you're going to do a large scale mural and it's coming out of pocket, it's going to quite, it's going to cost you quite a bit. It's going to be expensive. Uh, we're talking, let's say, at the minimum, 20 to 40 cans. I'm talking minimum, right? Let's just say at the minimum you have 20 to 40 cans. You have enough paint to cover an area and you have enough of a variety of cans. You need to have a variety of colors. So you're going to need at least 20 to 40 cans, right? Let's say roughly. And then let's say it's a $7 a can. You know, you're already talking about almost $200 right there. You know what I mean? That's just in spray paint. Let's say if you got to get bucket, you know, a bucket of rolling paint because you're going to want to roll the wall or whatever. Any other things you might need, food and other things, you know, all these things, it adds up. So if you ever see a big production or somebody painting a big wall, and you're wondering to yourself, why are they doing it for free? They're doing it for the love of it. They're doing it for their passion, especially if they're paying for it themselves, because there's money being spent to make that wall happen. Um, it, doesn't, it's not, it doesn't happen for free. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well, is that it costs money. So you're taking your time off and it costs money. Uh, the next thing is you're definitely gonna need a ladder, a lift, or a scaffold, depending on how big and how tall and how high you're going. A la how are you gonna get this? How are you gonna get this ladder to the wall if you're taking the train? Uh, how tall of a ladder do you need? Are you gonna fit it in your car? Uh, if you need more than a ladder, if you gotta go even higher, are you gonna get a scaffolding? Are you gonna get a lift? You know, these things are things you gotta remember when you're seeing a project and somebody says, "Hey, you want to paint this giant wall?" Think, keep these things in mind. Um, these are things you don't think about when you're just, uh, you know, doing used to doing canvases or black books, things like that. You don't think about that. Um, another thing is the bucket paint. You're gonna need a, to stop at a Home Depot or whatever and get a, you know, a bunch of bucket paint, rollers, uh, you know, the, the sticks for the rollers, all these tools that you're gonna need just to prime the wall. Um, another thing that people don't think about is, <laughs> is that part of it, right? Um, that's a cost, but it's also time consuming and laborious because rolling walls cleaning buffing the wall is as much work as it is painting the wall because literally you yourself are first cleaning the entire wall mm -hmm. you're buffing the whole wall and that is backbreaking and that is also under the sun and that is just as takes just as much time that's the warm-up that's the warm-up exactly 
So, um, yeah, that's something that sometimes people don't think about. They don't realize that even just priming the walls, you got to take into account the time that it's going to take you to prime the wall and the energy that it takes to do it and, of course, the, the money to get the bucket paint. Um, so let's say you get all that stuff out of the way and you, you're convinced you're going to do it. You have all your things, you have your supplies, you have all this stuff and you have your time mapped out. You're going to take that weekend off or that Labor Day weekend. You're going to spend the painting instead of hanging out barbecuing. So that's great. Now what are you going to do? So my advice to you is if you're going to do a big wall, have your sketch all planned out. Do not tackle a big wall unless you have some, some sort of plan. Some of you, and like myself, will try to freestyle something. You'll, you'll try to whip something up and improvise something on the wall. I don't recommend that when you're taking on a large project. You're going to find yourself in a bigger stress situation than you need to be. You're going to find yourself maybe wasting more paint than you should. Um, unless if you really are really fluid and, and you can really freestyle something, I don't recommend it. Um, I would recommend that you sketch the entire wall out. I recommend that you sketch it accurately to the wall, meaning um, know the proportion of the wall before you're going to paint it and, and plan something out beforehand, whether you go and you take a picture of it or you go on Google Maps. I did that one time. I went on Google Maps and I looked for the wall that I was going to paint. And then I, you know, when you can do that street view, you know what I'm talking about, Carla? When, when you yeah, can you, see that. you send the little, they have like a little... Um, like a little guy and you put it on the street <laughs> and then you can see the whole street and the Three, image 360 of the whole, view, yeah. yeah. So that is a, a good thing because you can actually, if you can't, let's say you can't get to the wall, let's say if you're going to paint in Boston and you're in New York and you can't get to Boston to take a picture of the wall, you could always go on Google Maps and mm -hmm. check out the, and get the address out. and just check out the wall and kind of start to project what are you going to paint on the wall, start figuring it out and sketching, right? Yeah. So that's something I recommend. Um, when you get to the wall and you are actually ready to paint, now you have your sketch and you have all that and you're ready to paint on the wall and you've already buffed it and the wall's all clean and everything, I recommend that you sketch as much as possible onto the wall in proportion and get your proportions right before you tackle anything else. Get your outlines on the wall. If it's characters, if it's whatever you're gonna do, uh, graffiti lettering, Get everything on the wall proportionate to your sketch. Make sure that your outlines look correct before you start to fill anything in. Don't waste your time pursuing just one corner of the wall and leaving the other side blank. Um, make sure that you tackle the whole thing at once. And another thing that I would recommend is if you're, if you're sketching out and your wall is really, really big, don't use sharp caps, use thicker caps. You know. Try to cover as much area as possible and lay down your blueprint as big as possible, as wide as possible, um, as quickly as possible, too. You don't want to spend too much time, but you want it to be accurate, but you still want to consider that this is still only a sketch. You're going to be going over all these lines. And that's why you need a sketch before going to the wall, because that's another thing. You can um, waste time yeah. if you don't know what you're going to do. And time is precious because the sun sets... The rain comes. You have only during the day, exactly. And if it rains, then you have one day that you couldn't complete whatever you you wanted to do that day. Yeah. A lot of times, um, so if I'm tackling a wall, let's say, with some of my friends, I've done not humongous productions, but medium-sized productions where we'll do characters and a little bit of background and, and pieces. Usually what I end up doing is I'll end up spending the first day doing lettering and the second day doing characters and background. If the lettering is really intense, I'll end up spending the first day and a half doing the lettering, and then I'll spend the last half of the day doing some fast characters. Mm -hmm. If I really have time, then I'll break it up into a whole day of, of lettering, a whole day of characters, and one last day to touch everything up and kind of finalize everything and get some final shots and all that. Um, but that that's usually the format yeah um and that also depends on how big it's the wall with who you're working if it's comfortable because sometimes also the location mm -hmm. can be a little bit complicated if you have to get there by train then you know that you're not gonna have the same days as if let's say um your friend has a house with a wall right and you know you you're comfortable to go there you have 
this is something that maybe you don't, maybe you're gonna say on your um, notes, but sometimes there's no bathrooms around. <laughs> I, I didn't have that. You didn't have that? <laughs> no. Well, because I'm always thinking about that. But uh, sometimes you go to a wall, and let's say if you're not the artist and you're the one watching, you know, you you want to go to the bathroom, you want to eat something, you want to drink something, and if the location of the wall is some place where there's nothing around, that's the worst. Yeah, I had I had food and drinks, but I didn't have bathroom. I forgot bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for for men, it's easy. No, no, it's still it's still. But still uncomfortable, still, right? Yeah, I forgot about that part. When you when you usually when you show up to a wall, uh, you show up to a location, you immediately tar- start to ask these questions. You begin to ask the people that are painting with you and the people around hey, you. Can I use the bathroom inside uh, the bodega? No, well, you start to or, ask where is everything. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. start to allocate yourself. All right, so where if I need water, where can I get water? Oh, over there. okay. If I need this, where can I get that? Um, And bathroom is one of them, yeah. You, mm-hmm. you immediately start to ask, where's the so where's the bathroom around here or whatever. Yeah. Um, sometimes you got to walk a distance, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to hold it in Yeah. at least half the day so that you can... Uh, you can y- just go, do it, and then until the, the next end break, of the day. Yeah, or the next, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's harder when it's really hot and you're drinking a lot of water all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I, 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 Carla's having flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so um, well, my next point was yeah, plan for food, plan for water, and plan for breaks. Um, when you get to a wall, you should really, the minute you're there and you start to sketch, you pull out all your cans. You're laying down your, you know, what colors are you going to use? You're laying out your, your palette on the floor. You, you know, okay, these are my yellows. These are my blues. These are my greens. You're trying to figure out what goes where and how is it going to work out for you. And then you should realize what time is it and try to start figuring out your schedule and say, okay, I can paint from this time to this time and at this time I'm going to take a break. Um, and on, and there's going to be people that are going to come by and talk to you. Mm-hmm. If you're with friends, they're going to start trying to chat with you and that's okay. Yeah. But stick to your schedule because you know, you know what time you need, how much time do you need. And uh, you don't want to get stuck in a deep conversation with somebody. And then next thing you know, you spent an hour and you didn't really get to do anything on the wall. Um, and especially if you have to really be on a ladder or you have to be up elevated somewhere. You know, you don't want to have conversations with people when you're up on a ladder. And <laughs> keep turning around and keep talking mm-hmm. and then keep trying to paint and keep turning, you know. So you, you do need to kind of, there is a certain amount of discipline that goes into trying to get these things done quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so planning out your day, planning out your day, your schedule. So at what time are you going to take a break? Uh, if you're with, a, with partners or whatever, be like, all right, yo, like one o'clock, you guys, if you want, I'll do a sandwich run or they do a sandwich run or, right. you know, who wants to do it? Usually somebody's going to eventually say, okay, at this time we're going to have drinks and, you know, I'll go for, for water and, and a sandwich. You guys want anything? I find that, well, maybe this is a question for you. Yep. Do you think that when you have, let's say, family members or let's say when I go to a wall, that you feel more comfortable because I'm the one that is going to remember the food breaks? Uh, Or you will you always remember, like, will you have it on your mind? Because I know that sometimes you can get so involved into I'm just doing the wall that maybe you forget. Uh, I honestly, I think I, I think it's worse. Really? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> because... Because I know that you're going to want or family or kids are going to yeah, want yeah. a break. Well, I, for myself, I'm not going to worry you about myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and keep going and take a break when I know I need a break and realize, okay, that was my schedule and just do something fast and just run over to some bodega and just like get something that I can eat lightly without being too heavy that right, I don't right. have to get food all over my hands because my hands are full of spray paint. And I can do my business quick, do a quick bathroom break, get water, go back on the wall. When it's when you're with people, yeah, it's helpful in a way because it's nice that people are thinking about you and trying to take care of you and they're like, oh, you know, you want you want something, you know, blah blah. blah. But at the same time, sometimes people, more people, make it a little more complicated. Yeah, um, I understand. Especially if if you're with people that maybe don't don't want to eat what you want to eat. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> another hard thing. Like, like you're painting and you're just thinking, yo, I just need some potato chips or just like something light that I can just eat quickly. I don't want to get things on my hands too much. And they're like, oh, there's a nice restaurant I walk by on the way over here. I want to get some arroz with, 
you know, arroz con gandules and some like chicken, some yeah, fried chicken. Yeah. I'm like, I can't eat fried chicken right now with my yeah, hands yeah. like that. So, all right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a it's, mixed bag. Mm -hmm. um, I think personally for myself, it's easier. It's easier when it's just me and a bunch of guys and we're just trying to knock it out. Right. But there has been, I'm not going to front, there are times where it's a relief to have somebody say, hey, I brought you back some water. Hey, I'm going to go get a, some food and right. you, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all right. I don't want to sound ungrateful, but it's, it's the okay. truth. It's this, okay. this podcast is about reality, right? No worries, it's fine. <laughs> She's never going to get me food ever again. <laughs> It's going to be like, hold on. <laughs> Just wait until the next wall. The next wall, I'm going to be painting. I'm going to turn around. She's going to be eating all by herself. A nice, big old. Exactly. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, okay. Continue. Uh, all right. Um, now, nah, so I just got a few more points. Uh, another thing to think about is um, obviously plan ahead. Plan ahead to have cameras, photos. This is when you're packing to go to the wall. Don't forget your camera. Don't forget your video camera. Don't forget whatever it is that you need. Your a, a, a cell phone charger, mm -hmm. because when you start to use oh, yeah. when you start to use your phone, whether you're looking up reference or you're taking photos or you're, or you're doing some sort of live stream, you know, while you're in the middle of a wall. And more when you don't have a car. Exactly. Exactly. Because so, when you have a car, you know. Well, I know that I got to the car. Let me just charge it for a little bit. But when you're doing it here in the city and you're traveling in train. It's so difficult. Yeah. And you need to have your phone. Yeah. And and when you're on a wall all day, your battery's draining and yeah. or maybe if you're listening to music or something, you're gonna kill your battery and the next thing you know before the end of the day you got no camera, so you could take no pictures at the end of the day of what you did. So if you don't have maybe if you don't have a portable charger, it will be good to invest in a portable charger that you can take with you and that's good for anybody but specifically for you. Yeah. You should get a portable charger and get just charge it before you go to a wall and take it with you and that's yep. gonna be very helpful. Yep. So so cameras for photos and all that stuff, that's important. Um, and then I'm, I think the last the last couple of things is get rest during your breaks. Don't forget that you have to keep your energy high. So if you you know I like to have a beer when I'm painting, you know just try not to overdo it. Fo you know balance it out. A lot of water, maybe one beer. You know what I mean? And then maybe a lot of water. And then at the end of, at the, end of the day, the last beer, as many as you want. But also, if you're going to paint for multiple days, don't overdo it at the end of the night. Try to get your rest so that the next day you come back really early because that's the killer. I've been in situations where I paint that one day, finish that night. I'm really excited. We're all happy. We go out for drinks. We're up all night. Next thing you know, the next day, I'm starting at 12. And I'm like, mm -hmm. fuck, I just lost the whole morning. You know what I mean? And then, and then it's an uphill battle. Then you're like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to finish this. Yeah. Can I just leave? Can I just leave? <laughs> um, I have a friend of mine, Jay. I think Jay, Jay Mac Music. If you guys want to look him up on Instagram, Jay Mac Music, M-U-Z-I-K. He's from New Jersey. He's a, he's a graffiti artist, and he also does really photo real portraits. The guy's a machine. I Amazing. think that I think that guy is probably one of the most disciplined painters that I've painted with. Um, th that man will get up and be at a wall when the sun is rising. Mm -hmm. He'll be there, like, he'll take advantage of the sun that's rising to, to continue to paint. So that by the time you show up, he's already like, yeah, I'm here already. And you're like, what? And, and then you're like, you want anything? He's like, no, no, I already had coffee. Well, I mean, he's like, yeah, I'll take a coffee. But he's already like over the breakfast already. He's on lunch already. Yeah. And you're showing up like, damn. He's very disciplined, and he'll paint the whole th the whole day through. And he's fast too. Mm -hmm. It's just that he likes to paint big. So mm -hmm. I think he knows he knows that he likes to get into his details because he does the photo real stuff. So he knows he gives himself that extra time, and he's not embarrassed to be the first one at the wall first thing in the morning, before the sun's even just breaking through. He's at the wall, um, catching that first light. So yeah, I think from him and from other people you know that I've painted with, I'll, I'll say definitely be disciplined keep your energy high you need that energy if you're going to paint over a couple of days you need that energy as strong the second and third day as you did the first day if not even stronger because it's, it's more difficult towards the end um and then the last thing that i think i'm going to bring up here is uh give yourself enough time for that final shot nothing hurts more 
<laughs> than to invest three days or four days or whatever it is on some wall production especially if you're traveling I've, this has happened to me when i've gone to puerto rico if i've gone to south america if i've gone to europe nothing hurts more than to be somewhere away from where you from your home you're painting at a, at a remote location and you finish and it's nighttime when you finish and you have no opportunity to get that final shot and you won't be back the next day nothing hurts you more than to have to make your final shot your final picture be a dark fuzzy nasty picture in the middle of the night so that sucks that sucks so plan plan that your final day is going to be ending at three yeah because at the minimum you go three maybe you go over to four mm -hmm. but at least by five you know for a fact you're taking pictures and what i've done what i've had to do sometimes is i plan for three i plan for four I, i've been with carla you've been with me at walls where by three o'clock i'm telling you tell me every 30 minutes what time is it tell yeah. me every 30 minutes what remind me the last wall in miami that was crazy yeah it was like that and then the thing is that we always that last day that um cortez is painting is is the day is the day that we have to go to the airport because we're coming back to new york yeah so we're always running around yeah. the clock so we're <laughs> like okay we need to leave at four so by 3 30 3 40 we need to be done and we're never done by four <laughs> <laughs> We're always She's running the into the airplane with, exactly. with hands full of spray paint and, and always running to take the last pictures, also. Yeah, <laughs> but we do it. Yeah, yeah. And we've done it. Sounds like it's like Mission Impossible. It's a lot like Mission Impossible, but I mean that's what that's what it that's what you're gonna look forward to. If you guys out there are interested in doing big, large scale murals, or if you're curious what that's like, the experience is like. This is what it's like. It's it's a lot of planning. Uh, things that probably you guys don't think about but we keep in mind every single time we get a big wall we, we this is all the stuff that we talk about and, and it runs through our head and now we do it automatically um, and it's it's a challenge but it's fun and it's and it's worth it if you have a passion for the art it's worth it <laughs> all right culture talk Yes. My favorite part <laughs> of the show because I get to sit back and let Carla do all the work. But this time, Carla, you're going to flip the script on us. What are we doing this time? Yes. Uh, this time we're going to do a, a movie review and we're going to be reviewing Coco. Coco. So this is our first movie review. Yes. The first ever. <laughs> um, so what we did is uh, we've watched Coco before. We we re-reviewed it again you yeah. know re-watched it and, and sat down and took notes mm -hmm. uh so we're gonna go through this kind of point for point and kind of go through the movie and some of our thoughts as we were watching the movie mm -hmm. um just uh heads up for everybody spoilers across the board i'm not paying attention to any spoiler con uh, you know so concerns here if you haven't watched the movie just skip over to hablando espanol <laughs> because we're gonna be talking about all the spoilers and everything and this is not that many spoilers, but the p there's a big plot spoiler in yes, this movie. Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Whatever. It's a plot twist. Like, we're going to talk about all of it. So I'm assuming you guys have watched it. It's a really cute animation. It won awards. That's why, you know, it's... Yeah, it won an Oscar for best animation. And also it won an Oscar for best song. Yeah. Which was Remember Me. <laughs> all right. So the summary of the story basically is it's, it's an aspiring musician miguel confronted with his family's ancestral ban on music enters the land of the dead to find his great great grandfather a legendary singer so basically this little kid miguel is rebelling against his family because they are against music they're against guitar players and against mariachis mm -hmm. because of something that happened in the past yeah Spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. The great grandmother had her heart broken by the great grandfather who ran off and whatever. Mm -hmm. He was a mariachi. So because of that, Miguelito wants to be, he wants to be a musician. So he runs off into the land of the dead to find his great grandfather to... To finally what? show to the family that it was in his, in his blood all over. To that, be... Yeah, his, his, He's meant to be a musician, a, a musician. guitarist. Yeah, he's got the, the guitar playing talent in his blood. Exactly. Okay. Whew. <laughs> it's a complicated plot. It is. We try to figure out how to explain it to the best we could here. And it's it's a lot of stuff. If you've seen it, you're with us on this. If you haven't, you might get a little lost. Yeah, Go so see it. 
Yeah, so we're just gonna talk about the f uh, points that we saw throughout the movie. Things that we like, things that stood out to us. Mm -hmm. um, in general, let's just say first right off the bat, did we like it? Yes. I think I liked it more, obviously, the first time. This time, because I was looking at it with a little bit of more of like a lens of analyzing different things. Okay. I was finding a lot of stuff that it was like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it's still a cute nice and and he has a lot of things going on for it to be a, a children animation yeah um i think for for me also i liked it when i first saw it and when we watched it i think we watched it with the kids the first time with mm -hmm. my kids i liked it i thought it was really good for them i enjoyed it a lot because of the fact that it was with them especially because i knew that they were seeing something they hadn't seen before yeah but on the second viewing Yes, something stood out that were like, oh, yeah, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a little annoying. This is a little annoying. Yeah. All right. So, but in general, I did like it and I think it, it deserved the awards and I, I want to see more movies like this. Me too. But now let's trash it. Okay. Number one, <laughs> 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 all spoilers, but okay. Number one is the title throws me the fuck off. The title Coco. I don't know why they called it Coco. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out who the hell Coco was. <laughs> Once they revealed who Coco was, I forgot about it halfway through the movie again who the hell coco was every time they said coco i was like okay whatever <laughs> it was hard for me to keep track of that but even when we were looking for this movie it was hard for me to remember the title and i think that's a mistake i don't know yeah uh, yeah go ahead uh so one of my points it's related it's not related to coco but it's related to um she being the great grandmother and is the heritage in the family which it comes all the way through back four generations yeah. before Miguel. And it, it is interesting to see how the whole heritage, their position in society, being a family of shoemakers, it stayed the same for so long. And their hate towards music too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the, the multi-generational thing is positive and it's good, yeah. but it's confusing for the story. Yeah, it is. The fact that we don't really get an understanding of Miguel and his parents. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's something that we realize towards later in the movie is that you don't really get a real feeling for how is Miguel, why is Miguel so attached to somebody he never met, his great, great grandfather, when it looks like he has both parents there and, he, and more than just both his parents, he has both parents, his grandmother. And they make, and they made a point about the great grandmother of, she being almost like just a little girl but she's the generation before the grandmother yeah and they didn't even talk about her husband or right. what happened yeah with her other family i don't know anything about that i just know that she remembers her dad and that she has alzheimer's but right. but you don't know about the yes. grandfather yeah so why is she so like a yeah. child yeah, that was weird. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things that I really liked about the movie yeah. is, and one of my biggest points, and one of the biggest reasons why I would recommend this movie is the freaking love for guitars that this movie has. If you are a guitar player, if you come from a family of guitar players, if you just like guitar music, um, or even, I think in general, if you're just being from a latino culture that it mm -hmm. just has this big romantic guitar yeah. romance with guitars throughout the whole movie the mariachis they all everybody has a different type of guitar they really got into the details of animating how you play the guitar how you move your fingers for the chords showing the strings vibrating every guitar has a different texture even though they're all acoustic guitars but they're all decorated differently and they have a different texture um a different character uh I've never seen that before. I've only seen, in, usually in these animated movies, they usually romanticize the cars, you know, like all the different car and, you know, cartoon characters of cars or all the different animals like Zootopia is all about all the different animals. And now you learn, you got to know what a lemur, a lemur is and you got to learn what a, you know, whatever a freaking sloth is exactly. because, you know, <laughs> oh, they got to animate a sloth and you got to know every detail of the sloth. Well, in this one, it's all about the guitars. And that you can see the the different textures, even. Yeah. Textures, styles of the guitars, the most simple ones and the most expensive ones. Yeah. Uh, La banda. Yeah. That they have later on. They have their instruments and mm -hmm. you see that. 
Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is is the ba el barrio that he lives in, the the the, the world that that Miguelito and his family live in, the little corner stores, the streets, the sounds when he's walking through the streets. It all feels so natural. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel um, hyper animated like. Like when you when the characters walk through Zootopia, it's like doo -doo 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 -doo, it's all silly and wacky, or you know yeah. what I mean. Here, you really felt like you were in this environment. They did a really good job of showing that and the colors and everything. Yeah, it's beautiful and it's very detailed. La, la plaza and everything, um, really nice. Yeah, I mean, also like going into like good design, I would say is the the scenes where he's crossing the bridge to go to the other world. Yeah. Um, the colors, the concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were talking about how uh, you you have to present photo ID at the border to cross the bridge to go to the other world, and it it imitates you know crossing the border here between the United States and Mexico. Mm -hmm. And that they made a point of having documents and being documented. If you're not documented in the system, then you cannot cross. And another thing that happens before this is between the family and Miguel, is that they have like an intervention telling him you cannot play music and this is the way it is and no you cannot because we hate music and i feel like that's very latino families that a, a family intervention is very latino yeah everybody <laughs> it's ha has it's something. happened to you you trying to say something Tell everybody <laughs> tries to say something um your your aunt your uncle your cousin your grandmother everybody has an opinion towards something maybe that they believe is wrong or whatever else you're doing they always say telling you yeah um, I think I think something else design-wise that I really liked, um, which happens later in the story, is the uh, the flying jaguar. That flying jaguar character is so cool. The it minute they so reveal cool. it, I don't think I've seen anything like that. Yeah, I like the colors. I like that he can fly. That he can still, even though he has all those colors, he's fierce. Yeah. Like he doesn't look like a silly. Yeah, animal yeah, fantasies yeah. usually fantasy animals are like very sweet and gentle this one no this one he was like ah yeah he was gonna like fight he was like a he was like a tamed or like a loyal wild animal yeah yeah that exactly. was interesting that was interesting yeah and another thing was the introduction of frida kahlo yeah in the world of the dead and it was really cool to see her. Um, uh, something that I was thinking about is that I feel that Miguel didn't know who she was, but they, the uh, movie makers or the producers or the creators, they did it for the public that was watching the movie. Right. For so us to see all, oh, see, we included Frida Kahlo yeah. into, into the, the, the story. The, the, uh, the, uh, dead people in the other world yeah so she's she's there and represented as a skeleton character and she was still being an artist so right. she had like her little studio and she was creating her performances and her pieces <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because the performance was like and now i'm gonna do this performance and we're gonna have dancers and all the dancers are gonna be me <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lot of little dances and you can see and they turn the faces around and they all, and they all have the, like Frida, the eyebrow, yeah. Frida eyebrows and all uh, Frida one thing that you pointed out that I, and this scene two, a couple of things stood out one thing that you pointed out is that they didn't include Diego Rivera no they didn't and he would be in the, in the other world right because he's dead he's dead and he would be he, there with her and exactly. supposedly they were the, they were love eternal love together so i don't know that was a little weird yeah they didn't include it that's him there. that might have to do with the fact that they're trying to make it a ma matriarchal story mm -hmm. storyline mm -hmm. and they want to focus on the female characters mm -hmm. i don't know because yeah thinking it's about it's it you even I, f I didn't even realize it you pointed it out i was like holy shit yeah how did i not even realize that and even thinking about it it is true what you're saying because even in the world of the dead the one that he was in charge, it was the great great grandmother. In the world, in the living world, the one that was in charge was the grandmother. Right. And then I guess, yeah, it makes sense that they wanted just to focus more on the female characters. And also, another thing about Frida is that she tells Miguel that he has the spirit of an artist. The, the what? The spirit of an artist. Oh. So for me, that was nice also because. It was just like a nice touch. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice daydream, right? If you're if you're a, 
a kid,、uh-huh. aspiring creative person, and you have Frida Kahlo from the other,、yeah. you know, from Beyond the Dead telling you, "Oh, you have the spirit of an artist." Like that's yeah, that's yeah. a beautiful scene. That's、yeah. nice. I, and I think、uh, something that stood out to me in that scene, I think that scene is pivotal. That's a key point because she reveals something in kind of empowering him at that point,、mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and yet she's doing it with her Spanish accent. You know, and and a very Spanish character, and at that point, I realized, wow, this movie, I've gotten this far into the movie, and and it's still filled with Spanish characters. They're not just slapstick, disposable characters. The movie is gonna, it's making a commitment to to push the narrative forward with either Spanish speaking or English with Spanish accent speaking characters. That are being taken seriously. Yeah. That are de- that are developing the story and and that are credible narrators to the story. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that was really nice. That was unique.、Mm-hmm. And then another point will be when they show what is a final death.、Um, so in this point, there's Hector. He's with Miguel, and they're visiting one、uh, Hector friend and. This friend, he's being forgotten forever. So he, he's fading. So he's fading. So because he's being he's、um, being forgotten, that this means that he's gonna die forever, and that's it. So、um, Hector start playing the guitar and start playing a song for him, and it's a very touching moment because it's when you realize, wow. So if this really exists, this means that you had a second chance, and then after that, that's it. Yeah, I, that makes me think of. I mean, we talked about it, but it makes you think of all the people in your real life that might have passed away, that you don't talk about anymore, or, or you kind of, you know, day to day, you don't really, really remember for any reason. Yeah. And it makes you do. It makes you think. Yeah, I mean, you get forgotten. Does that mean you really do disappear permanently? You know. Yeah, that's that's the saying that they have now in the let's say the our living world that. You will always live in the memories of the one that loves you, and one, and、uh, once they forget you, then you really died. Yeah,、mm-hmm. that's a good point. I mean, it's pretty deep for a, for, for a little a animator. Yeah,、right? I know. Yeah, <laughs> for a little animated movie, that's、mm-hmm. pretty deep.、Um, so yeah, I mean, another thing that I, I, you know, I liked a lot was the the big music festival.、Um, yeah, they had so in the in the in the land of the dead. They have this big music festival imitating the f- the music festival that they had earlier、mm-hmm. uh, in the Living Land, right? So now in the Dead Land, Miguelito has another opportunity to prove himself and to perform at this festival,、mm-hmm. and that was really cool. Yeah, that's when you get to see all these different acts come out on stage. They they like. Com- comedic and yeah, they it have, was very sabado gigante. It was very like all this variety show of like. They have even a, a emo guy, <laughs> and he was he had like synthesizers and he will turn around, play some keyboard, turn around, move some <laughs> stuff, and that was so funny. And then they have the banda. La banda was great. The they banda, tore it up. Yeah, they like you felt it like it woke up and and you were like wow this is like feels like a real show.、Mm-hmm. And then obviously、uh, Miguelito does his his、uh, duet with.、Uh, With Hector, with Hector, who spoilers is really his great grandfather, yeah. But um, but they do the little duet and the little the the the, sh- the stage fright, him being afraid and、mm-hmm. all that stuff. But then he starts to sing and he lets out that that proud howl and he's like, oh, he's like screaming out and he's like playing his song. Like that was really cool. Yeah. So then I guess continuing into um a little bit of the concepts that they had in the. In the land of the dead, is that the people that were the most remembered, and this means that, for example, in the living world, you were very famous, and this is why everybody remembers you even after you're dead.、Um, they were the most wealthy. So then Miguel goes into De La Cruz house, which is the guy that he thinks is his great great grandfather. And everything over there is like awesome. They have a pool in a form of a guitar. They have a DJ. It's almost like a mansion.、Um, they have a party full of people. Everything、yeah. is very colorful,、um, and you can see like they're so wealthy. And you think like, wow, in why? The dead. Yeah, like in the in even after life, you're still even after、old. life, you still have inequalities, even yeah, which is crazy. Yeah,、um, and in that scene, that's another scene where. Again, music plays a huge part in this. La,、mm-hmm. La banda is a great. 
I gotta find out. We, we said we're gonna find yeah. out if, if that banda is a, is a real banda or that they use actual musicians or, or you know, to be the voice actors or, or the singers because they they made it seem like they were doing a cameo. Mm -hmm. You know that banda, but uh, they so Miguelito sneaks into this party with la banda and it's like they're fun and the way they talk to him and they they embrace him that's really cool. And when Miguelito does his song in front of De La Cruz and he does some song about uh family is something and this that and the other and he's singing with his pride and this mm -hmm. attitude and he's sliding down the banister it was so cool yeah that was, was that was really cool really nice um and then and around this part is when we hear the final plot twist the uh the reveal the big uh spoiler which is that de la cruz the guy that you know the the old mariachi that miguelito thought was his great-grandfather turns out that no he actually had poisoned his great grandfather and killed him and that's when the story takes a dark ass novella twist mm -hmm. where i was like no way this is way too dark <laughs> for an act. i was like damn this just made me feel bad like yeah it was surprising and then even so right this is all revealed blah blah and even after the great great grandmother finding out that he died he didn't that, want it that hector that Hector, sorry. That Hector, who was the real great-grandfather. Exactly. That Hector, who was a real great-great-grandfather, died at that time in the past. She was still upset at him because he left and he didn't <laughs> want to leave. Yeah, it was, they, they played her like an angry yeah. Latina. Yeah, like yeah. Like a crazy angry Latina. That was crazy. <laughs> well, there's this one scene that I, I want to point out is when, they're, when Miguelito and, and Hector who is now revealed to be his his real great grandfather who was being forgotten because his photo is not on the on the altar yeah. back in the real world yeah. in the living world when they reveal that they are actually family and they're in this pit they're thrown into this pit by de la cruz mm -hmm. and they're just in the pit alone and then they finally reveal it to each other and then they're like i'm proud to be your family and you're proud to be my family and it's, it's like a touching moment because it's like wow like they, they're so happy but then you realize, and I started to think, like, but why isn't Miguelito worried about his parents? Yeah. At this low point in his life, you know, he's in this pit with a with a skeleton in the afterworld he, that he just met, and he's found out that he's been betrayed and all this stuff, and he found out about murder and all this shit, and he's not going to be like, oh my god, my parents, I wish my parents were, you know, mm -hmm. or, 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 or I regret running away from my parents. Nothing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, That's and. True. And another um, point is that it's a touching moment when they're showing a flashback of Hector singing to Coco when she's a little girl and uh, he's playing Remember Me. And then you see him playing very sweet and you see her very cute, like trying to sing the words also and then they sing it together and it was just like really touching. Yeah, that was, that was sweet. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's that's when they when they finally reveal, or at least they reveal, they put the idea in Miguelito's head, you know, the song. Exactly. That the song would would wake up the. Will help her to remember. The great grandma. It yeah. would wake up the great grandma to mm -hmm. Coco. To remember, her Hector. father, which Hector. is Hector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the story. Um, yeah, that was that was touching. So. I think my last points are just um, I <laughs> I had a hard time with the fact that the great when at the end of the movie when the great grandmother Coco when mm -hmm. she when he when Miguelito comes back to the uh, to the real world to the living and he plays the guitar for Coco and she finally wakes up and is like oh Dada and whatever and Papa Papi or whatever, whatever uh -huh, the hell yeah, she is. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, yeah, she remembers. And everybody's like, okay, fine. You know, his music is, is, you know, brought her back. So it's okay for him to be a guitarist or whatever. All this stuff, all these emotions and all this stuff. And then Coco, the great grandmother, pulls out the torn piece, the piece that was missing from the photo yeah. that shows the father's face. She had it in a book the whole time. And she just goes into her drawer and pulls out the thing and has the photo. It's so annoying that yeah. that thing that the little kid had went to the freaking land of the dead to try to find out the true identity of the great grandfather and all this shit mm -hmm. and that he thought the great grandfather was the old mariachi de la cruz and all this shit and coco had the freaking 
torn picture right there in her fucking yeah. book. I mean, but they had to do that, though, because he needed to have the photo in order for them to meet each other back in the land of the dead. Uh -huh. because if at that point i was so frustrated <laughs> I, was like, i was like really <laughs> yeah because they were saying like if he if she dies because then after that she died and then how that's how she ended up going to the land of the dead so if she died she was the only one remember him because she was the only one who knew him so that's why they needed to find the photo first before she died to have the photo up and then she can die and then they can meet Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, we're, what we're, if you're getting the gist from this review, what we're saying is Coco is a complicated story. It's a yeah. novela. If you're not into that, don't recommend it for you. If you can deal with novela plot twists that twist and turn and this, that, and the other, and the, then, you know you're gonna enjoy this and you're gonna enjoy it because of the visuals and all the other elements that we described mm -hmm. um one one last thing that stood out to me and this is just a nitpicking on the second watching that i was like damn i didn't realize this everybody in in this whole movie coco is the oldest person in the whole fucking movie she's the oldest person in the living and in the dead in the land of the dead and in the land of the living she is the oldest person she's the oldest person when she was alive and when and after she dies she goes to the li the land of the dead and she's a skeleton version of coco and she's an old lady and she's still older than all the old people in the land of i didn't understand that that's true the land of the dead was all full of young people yeah and i didn't i didn't notice that until you said that i was like no no they were not i i mean but they were there were maybe a few a few people that maybe were representing like a 50 year old and a, and 60. And a 60 but there was nobody that died but of natural that causes coco coco they exactly nobody they, nobody in the land of the, of the of the dead died of natural causes of age 90 mm -hmm. no because coco they they made her seem as if she was like 90 and exactly that she died just because she was old and that's yeah, it natural causes so nobody else was like coco nobody no because you would figure there would be more people like in wheelchairs or just like older like yeah. sitting around being really old yeah yeah, yeah that was weird <laughs> and and then my kids couldn't get over the fact that coco was an old lady in the in, in the, the in, in land of the dead in the land of the no, dead no and that she was the old lady and that her dad was so young yeah because he died young so <laughs> when he passed <laughs> to the land of the dead he was still young and then that's a weird part of, of the end of the movie because you have the family, the mom, she still looks kind of young. The dad is young and then the old lady is it's a trying little to be, girl. It's trying to be a little girl and it's Coco. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they could have done different, but that did ring a little weird. Um, and, but then they close it with a good song. Yeah. That, that's the close. I know that the final song is really, is really nice. They have a, a song, a nice, a nice, I think the little boy singing at the end. Um, I remember Is it Remember that. Me? No. No, it's a different song, but it's it's nice. Okay. All right. Well, in general, yes. Go watch it, right? Go watch it. It's good. Um, it hits you in the feels. Yeah. It's complicated, but it's, it's a really nice story. Don't let this bad review dis dismay you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted me to teach you, right? Hablando español, Carla. Yeah. <laughs> what words do you have for me? Come on. Okay. Uh, background. Background is fondo. Yes, and it can also be if we're using it for coco. It can also be el historial or el pasado. Oh, background meaning the person's background. It can be used. I want to use it both ways. Fondo, which is the background of the wall. The physical background, right. And then background of, let's say, your family or you. So, fondo. And then the other one? Historial. Historial. Okay. Okay. Next one, project. Project. Proyecto. Yes. Proyecto with a Y. Yeah. That's the trick. Proye right. Proyecto. Proyecto. Next one is time. Time. Tiempo. Yes. Next one, days. Days? Dias. Yeah, this is like we're going back to basics. Uh, next one, <laughs> ladder. 
Ladder. Escalera. Yes. Next one. I'm killing these. I'm killing them. Elements. Elements. Elementos. Carla, I'm slaying the Spanish. Expensive. Expensive? Carísimo. No, caro, caro. <laughs> caro, caro. Next one is passion. Passion. Pasión. Yes. Wow, Carla. Aquí Be tenemos passionate. mucha pasión. Next one is wall. <laughs> wall? Pared? Pared? Yes. Pero cuando se dice muro? You... What's the difference between, between pared and muro? So it's basically the same thing. Uh, a pared and a muro, when you translate into English, it means wall. Okay, and yeah, because yeah. I just sometimes I get confused. I don't know whether to say, oh, voy a pintar la pared, voy a pintar el, el mural, el muro, from mural. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now the next word will be murals. Murals. Mural. Murales. Murales. Yeah. Murales or murals. Murals is murales. Y el mural is one mural. Yeah. Gotcha. Discipline. Discipline, disciplina. Yes. Uh, the next one will be labor. Labor, labor. Yes. Really? Yes. Labor sounds a little weird for me, but yeah. It is labor. Labor, labor. Next one is abuela. Ah, I said it in Spanish. Ah. <laughs> so what is abuela? Abuela is grandmother. Okay. <laughs> abuela. So what is um, great? Grandmother. Great grandmother is tatarabuela. No. Eso es lo que le digo. Uh uh. Mi tatarabuela. Great grandmother is bisabuela. Oh. And great great grandmother is tatarabuela. Oh. Okay. One more time. Great grandmother. Yeah. Bisabuela. Bisabuela. So tienes la la mamá, your mother, your abuela, your grandmother. Your bisabuela, your great grandmother. And then your great great grandmother is your. Tatarabuela. Tatarabuela. Got it straight. Next one and last one is intervention. Intervention. Intervención. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations, you won what a the trophy to Hablando Español. Best competitive. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get a... Best participant. One-way ticket to the land of the dead? <laughs> <laughs> no, the bridge. please, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I got, I got one for you. I got a couple. Oh, wow. Okay, dale. All right, number one. In the movie, yeah. there was a lot of skeletons. How do you say skeleton in Spanish? Carabela. Carabela skull. How do you say skeleton? Esqueleto. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always stumping you. I'm always No, stumping. you're not. No, you're not. All right, all right. Continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Continue. <laughs> all right. Um, in the movie, you have to cross the bridge to go to the land of the dead. How do you say bridge? Puente. There you go. El puente para allá. Spaca. El puente. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Puente. Um, this is one that I, I have had a hard time looking up. And I don't know if there's a direct translation, but how do you say... We're doing right now a movie review in this episode. How do you say review or movie review? Reseña. What? Reseña. Reseña. Any type of review is a reseña. For real? Yeah. That's a good one. I think we're going to end it on that one. That's a good one. Reseña. 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 How do you spell that? R E S E. Ñ, e. Reseña. Holy crap. I never used that. Reseña. Yes. All right. Learn something new. All right. That wraps up another episode. Um, next episode will be episode 10, New York's art form. We're going to have, for the first time, a guest on the show. Yeah. Dr. Greedy is going to join us. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's an old friend of mine, an old graffiti artist uh, from the 90s. Uh, we painted for many, many years together, and we will be having a nice long conversation about all types of things related to graffiti. And on Culture Talk, we're going to continue the conversation, and we're going to talk about graffiti culture in movies, books, and other media. And then at the end, as always, Hablando Español. <laughs> <laughs>